Hey guys, Brett here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basic usage of Image Maker Pro. So when you first log in, you're going to see a screen that looks similar to this. Now, if you haven't made any images yet, you're not going to see a list here of images, obviously. So what you're going to want to do is click on the Create New button. This is going to bring in a dialog box that's going to ask you for the graphic name. You can enter in any name for your graphic that you want. This is just for your reference only, so you can remember what this graphic was for when you go and edit it later. So I'm just going to call this test graphic. Go ahead and click on the create new button. And it's going to list my images in alphabetical order. So you can see it's right here now. And in order to start building my graphic, I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button. So this is the graphic editor. And on the left hand side, you can see the settings for the graphic where you can save it, where you can load a template, where you can export your graphic as a PNG. You can clear the canvas and start all over fresh. You can set the graphics background and there are a couple of different backgrounds. You can use one of our stock backgrounds or upload your own custom background if you like. You can clear the background and you can set the canvas width and height. And in order to set the canvas width and height, you can use this slider here or you can simply type in the specific height that you want. So I'm just going to use the maximum width and height here because I'm going to do an example and I want as much room as possible to show you how the things work. Up top, you're going to see all the different elements that you can add inside of your graphic. So you can add in a circle, a square, you can add in clip art, you can add in text, or you can add in a graphic. Now, most of these things are going to be self-explanatory, but I want to show you a couple of different things with each of these. The first thing I want to show you is this color wheel. On the lower right-hand side here, you can actually see the color wheel. Now, this is the way you set the color of different images that you add inside of your graphic. So just for example, let me go ahead and add in a square and I'll make it nice and large so we can all see it very well. Now, if I want to change the color of that square, the first thing I do is move my mouse over the color wheel and then I pick the general color that I want. So let's say, for example, I want it to be green. I'm going to move the mouse over the green section and then I'm going to go ahead and click any one of these green sections. This is then going to bring in a variety of shades based on where I've clicked. And by clicking one of these variety of shades, I can then change the color of that box. This works for all of the elements, the square, the circle, and the text. And it also works for the background. So if I don't have anything selected, by editing the color wheel, I can actually set the background to what I want. Alrighty, let me go ahead and clear this off. We can start over fresh again. Up here you're going to see the graphics button and this is where you go ahead and enter in graphics and there's a couple of things that are important about this graphics button i'm going to go ahead and show them to you right now so you can see there's actually several options here i can upload my own graphic i can go ahead and view graphics that i've already uploaded and there's a button here called public uploads and this may need some explanation so i'm going to go ahead and explain it now you can see when I upload a graphic, it's going to ask me if I want the graphic to be a private upload for me only, or if I want it to be a public upload for all users. And the point of this is that if you make it a public upload, what you're doing is adding to the public graphic library. So for example, right now I have my specific uploads, and these are things that I only want me to be able to use. But if I go ahead and upload it as a public graphic, anybody can go into the public uploads and use any of the graphics that are in there. So if you're uploading a graphic, if you want it to be something specifically for you, you would make it a private upload. If you want it to be something that you want to share with the Image Maker Pro community, you can make it a public upload. And if possible, I actually encourage people to make their uploads public. By doing this and by sharing your images with other people and other people sharing their images with you, you guys are all going to be able to build a large library of graphics that you can use in your designs and help each other out. If you go ahead and click on the clip art button, you can see there are several different types of clip art. There's arrows, there's shapes, there's clip art with transparent PNGs, 
and you can also click on this button and you can search for images from Pixabay. So simply go ahead and enter in the image you want to search for by keyword, click on find images, and it will find images from Pixabay that you can use in your designs for free. So simply click on the one you find and it will add it into your design and you can now use it. I want to show you how the drag and drop interface works. The system is fully drag and drop. You can resize, move, reposition, and rotate the images. And this works for everything. It works for text, images, the boxes, the circles, anything that you can put inside of the canvas can be fully edited with the drag and drop system. In order to do that, simply click on the image or other object that you want to move. Once you do that, you can see on the right hand side, it's going to bring in all the options for that image. So you can go ahead and adjust the transparency of this since it's a graphic. You can clone it. You can bring it to the top, which means put it above other images, send it to the back, which means put it behind. You can add a filter such as grayscale, color invert, brighten, sharpen, blur, emboss, noise, or reset. And you can use this little adjustment here if you want to make fine tune adjustments. So if I just wanted to move it a little bit at a time to make it positioned exactly the way I want it, I can go ahead and click on this and it will move it just a little bit. And I can adjust how fine this is going to be. So if I move it all the way up, it's going to move it slightly more. If I move it all the way down, it's going to be a very fine adjustment. Now, if I don't want to make fine adjustments, if I want to make large adjustments, I can simply use the drag and drop interface. I can move it around anywhere I want. I can use any of these drag handles to simply make it larger or smaller. All you have to do is put your mouse over one of these little boxes here and you can adjust its size. And similarly, I can use this drag handle to rotate the image if I like. If I want to make the image a mirror image, I can use the drag handle to simply flip it over and make it a mirror image. So you have full control of all of the elements that you put inside of your graphic. You can adjust them, rotate them, you can adjust their transparency, and you can apply filters to them if you like. And again, this will work with all of the widgets that you can add in here. The text, the clip art, the square, and the circle, and all the graphics that you upload or that you use from the public library. If you make a mistake, you can go ahead and click on the undo button, and that will revert your last change. The last thing I want to show you is this option right here, this unlock object and lock object. So you'll see a drop down here that says lock and unlock object. And what this does is it allows you to make an object unmovable. And this way you can't accidentally move something. So if I want to go ahead and lock it, I'll just change it to locked. And now I can't move this object. This way, if I put something the way I want it, I fine tune it, I get it exactly the way I like it, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally grab it and move it later. And by locking the object, I'm going to be able to do that. If I want to go ahead and move it again, I simply unlock the object, and it is now editable and movable. Once you get your graphic completely made, simply go over to the settings section here, click on export as a PNG, and it will open the image in another browser tab. Put your mouse over the image, right click, and select Save Image As, and you can then save the image to your computer for later use. And that's the basic usage of the Image Maker Pro software. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm always glad to be of assistance when I can. Thank you and enjoy.